take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. The songs carry power. They carry hope. They carry expectation. And that turnaround will come to pass from the testimony of this song. In Jesus' precious name. Welcome everyone here tonight. As we look on the subject of keys to vision fulfillment. Keys to vision fulfillment. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 all the way to verse 4. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Keys to vision fulfillment, we are understanding what it takes to fulfill vision. By way of introduction, it's important to note that the major thing about vision is not receiving it. It is fulfilling it. It is not possessing it. It is realizing it. Those who conceive vision are many. But those who achieve vision a few. Like you know in life, what is important is not the starting of a thing. It is the finishing. Those who start are plenty. Those who finish are few. The truth is, there are many genuine God originated visions which never saw the light of day. Either because the people didn't know what to do or they are not willing to do what it takes to bring vision or what it took to bring vision to pass. There are a few keys to the realization of vision. Vision must move from conception to reality. There are keys. There are things to ensure if vision must happen. And what are these? Number one, ensure that the vision is valid, authentic, and worthwhile it must be a valid vision that is authentic and worthwhile Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 said I will stand up on my watch and I will watch to see what he will say there are three things involved here that means first ensuring that, they, that there is the God factor in the vision to ensure that the vision is valid. To ensure that the vision is authentic. To ensure that the vision is worthwhile. We must ensure that there is the God factor in the vision. How does this thing affect God? What does this mean to God? Second, it is ensuring that the vision is not just about selfish pleasure gratification, name or fame. It's not all about selfish pleasure, 
self of personal gratification or about making name or fame. No. It's beyond self. Ensure that. Thirdly, 1C, it is ensuring that the vision is strong on impact on humanity. He is strong regarding impact on humanity. That is what makes the vision valid, authentic, worthwhile. The God factor is in it. It is not just about, I want to make a name or have fame or gratify myself and then it has impact on people. There was a man by the name Henry Ford. This, wa- this man was an, a roadside automobile me- mechanic. He is the founder of the Ford Motor Vehicle. He came up with a vision. Not the vision of making a name or making money or anything like that. But he noticed that in those days, only the wealthy people in America, that is the richest, could afford to own a car. Because cars were manufactured one by one. Like you place an order for a suit in a tailor's place. You go to a car manufacturer and say, I need a car. And then they can say, come back in one month. Manufacture it one, one by one. And he came up with a vision. I am going to make a car that is affordable, affordable for the average working class in America. I will make an affordable car that not only the rich could buy, but anybody, average person can walk and go and buy a car. And then he invented the assembly line method where the cars are not manufactured one at a time now, but manufactured a mass at once. Where you can have 50 cars come out of the factory. Or 100 cars. The carburetors are all manufactured in mass. And then the, 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 the kickstarters are manufactured in mass. And then assembled together. And then you have mass. He did that. And everybody was able to afford to buy a car. In doing that, he ended up as an effortless millionaire. Millionaire billionaire. He wasn't looking for money. But when you make impact, you attract income. He wasn't looking for money. He was looking for meaning. That was it. That man impacted so many people's lives to a point where the minimum wage was shifted up. He was paying far more than the other people were paying people in their, in their, in their workplaces. A point came where he decided, one year he decided to divide the profit the company made. He divided the profit and shared it among the workers. <sighs> That was not a man that was trying to make a name, fame, or gain. That was a man that had a vision. He was a spiritual person too. But above all, he had a vision that was beyond himself and a vision that touched lives. Ensure that the vision is valid, authentic, and worthwhile. Number two, ensure that you maintain Clarity with the vision. Clarity. He said, make it plain. Make it plain. You must take note of the following first. What is not clear to you has no right to be clear to anybody else. If a person says he has a vision and he is not sure of what the vision is all about, No other person has the right to be sure of it. What is not clear to you is is not, has no right to be clear to anybody else you are trying to explain it to. Secondly, what is not clear to you is not there for you. Because as far as your eyes can see, I, I will give it to you. If it is not clear to you, it is not there for you. You must come to a point where if they wake you up from the sleep, in the middle of your sleep, you are aware of what your life is all about. You are aware of what your life is about. You are aware of what you are on earth for. 
You are aware of what goal and target you have on earth. Vision. Ensure that there is clarity. Let it be clear to you. Hallelujah. 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 When our children were growing up, three years old, and you ask this child, what do you want to become? The child will not just tell you, I'm going to become this, but will tell you like this man, I am going to become a hydrobiologist. That is the super specialization. That was the kind of experience we had had with some of them. Am I communicating at all? That is, it is crystal clear to you. I am not existing at random. I know what my life is about. And I know where I am headed for. That was number two. Number three, ensure to plan the vision. He said, write the vision. That is planning. Ensure to plan the vision. Vision is knowing where you are going. Planning is knowing how to get there. This is where I am going and this is how I am going to get there. Ensure to plan the vision. Write the vision. Please note the following that first, vision without planning is dreaming without reality. Is dreaming without reality. Also notice that it doesn't matter how fantastic a vision is until it is committed to a workable plan. Frustration is inevitable. It doesn't matter how fantastic a vision is until it is committed to a workable plan. Frustration is inevitable. Great vision, no plan. What do you want to do? I want to become so and so. How are you going to go about it? I don't know. I, I'm just praying. I'm just doing this and that. What does planning include? First, planning is identifying the correct ap approach. To the realization of the vision. What is the correct approach? If this is what I believe God wants me to do. I am meant to be a billionaire. How do I go about it? For the sake of the kingdom. Identifying the correct approach. Moses had the vision of delivering Israel. But he didn't have the correct approach. He went about trying to kill a person in order to deliver the people. And by the frustration of the wrong approach, he abandoned that vision for 40 solid years until God called him again. When the vision lack approach, the, the reproach is inevitable. Hallelujah. It is identifying the correct approach. Number two, it is allocating time schedules. To identifiable causes of action. Now you have identified what to do and how to go about this vision. The next thing is allocating time schedules. To identifiable causes of action. Right. I am going to become a neurosurgeon. By the time I am 30 years old, let's say, how do I go about it? By the time I am 15 years old or 16 years old, I step into medical school and by the time I am 22 years old, I have graduated. If I just pursue the course of action straight, but in four years time after that, that is, I am 26 years old. I've gotten my fellowship in surgery. Then by the time I do another three years, I got it under 30 years. I was about 27 years. That's, you have time schedules allocated. 
it is not a matter of I want to be I want to be computer literate when when do you plan to start when do you plan to finish it's not about I am going to start helping the poor when and you are going to say it's not when I become a multi-millionaire necessarily I will start with 10 naira I will start with 1000 naira and help somebody am I communicating at all there are many who have vision but they don't have a plan there are those who have a plan but they don't have a schedule this is where I'm going all right, this is how I will get there. And this is when I will start the journey. Am I communicating? There are many people looking at me as if I'm preaching Greek. I am going to go to the glory gate. And I am going to pass through the central aisle. The vision is to reach there. The plan is to pass through the central aisle. And the schedule is to start it now. Somebody say amen. Vision is time sensitive and destiny is time sensitive. Everything you want to do or achieve in life that has no time and location, you are just playing with your life. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. That was number three, ensure to plan the vision. Number five, ensure ensure that ensure to subject the vision. All right, let me say it this way, it's a bit cumbersome. Ensure that you subject the vision to continuous reviews. He said that he may run that read it, read it. Present continuous. Ensure to subject the vision. Ensure that you subject the vision to continuous reviews. The vision must be subjected or subject to continuous viewings and reviewings. Readings and rereadings. This is what God wants me to do. This is what God wants me to do. Then I looked at the script again. Then I look at the script again. What does revision, what does continuous review achieve? Number one, continuous review intensifies fire and passion in, in, the, in the pursuit of the vision. It intensifies fire and passion. He said that he may run that read at it. It intensifies fire. The more you look at what you, you believe God, has, God wants you to do with your life and time, whether you are achieving it or you are not achieving it or you are far from it or close to it, there is fire that is intensified. Continuous review intensifies fire and passion. Number two, continue or B, continuous reviews deepen understanding. The more you look at what you read and reread, what you believe God wants you to do or God is saying to you, there is. A deepening of understanding. And number three, continuous reviews facilitate possible readjustments. Possible readjustments of action plan where necessary. It facilitates possi possible readjustments in action plan where necessary. It helps you to look at what you have been doing. And to find out whether what you have been doing has been producing result. And if what you have been doing has not been producing result. To find out what kind of thing to do again. You see, vision is fixed. But planning is flexible. What God wants me to do is a constant. 
How I can get it done is a variable. Am I communicating at all? Elisha will raise the raise back to life the, the son of the Shunammite woman. That is a constant. That child must come back to life. But how he is going to raise that boy back to life can vary. First of all, he gave his rod to Gehazi. The rod did not work. And he did not die with what was not working. There are people who want to die with what is not working. He didn't die with what was not working. Oh, the rod cannot wake the boy. Let me try another approach. What is most important is that the boy must wake. It's not a matter of what I do to wake him. He must wake. Am I communicating? God sent Elijah to the brook chariot. And then the brook dried. And Elijah didn't remain there to dry with the brook. Neither did he look for water to water the brook. Neither did he pray for the brook to come back. He changed approach. God relocated him. To the widow of Zarephath, where the vision continued. That is why you look at the vision to see whether there will be possible readjustments. There are people seated here tonight. I prophesy to you today that which you need to do to move your life beyond where you are, grace for it is coming upon you. Ensure that you subject the vision. To continuous reviews. And number five, ensure that you run with the vision. Run with the vision. It is not possible to fulfill a vision you are not ready to run with. Run with the vision. He said, write the vision, make it plain that he may run. Take note of the following, please. First, vision that is not pursued is never possessed. Vision that is not pursued is never possessed. Second, vision only gains motion with action. It gains motion with action. Show me a man. Who says he has a vision from God? That vision will die in stagnation without action. And finally, or second to the last notice. Anything that must work out must be worked at. If you don't work at it, it never works out. No matter how strong the vision is. What is not worked at never works out. Hmm. Some wise person said, success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. That it is not all about inspiration. I have seen gifted people that are frustrated because gifting and talent enough is not enough. I mean, alone, they are not enough. Ideas alone are not enough. Somebody must back it with massive action. Somebody say amen. You can see vision that you sat in your house and fried chicken flew and entered your mouth. Roasted chicken flew from where? In his roasting, it flew from the oil. Just looking for you to enter your mouth. That is more like um, a nightmare <laughs> that is witchcraft <laughs> oriented. Somebody say amen. I've seen people who have had very great encounters with God, great revelations, great visions, 
great dealings and great in every way, but they just sat like big men waiting for God to work out everything until time passed. See, somebody said, oh, God called me 35 years ago and um, he said he wants me to become a so-and-so evangelist, so-and-so, uh, 30 something years ago. And he called, God called him when he was 25 years. And now plus 35, that is, uh, is, it, is this not 60? And he, said, and he said, so how far are you going to say, I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. I'm just, I'm just taking my time. I know that it will, just, it will happen soon, uh, but I'm just taking my time. You know, I'm taking my time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will never, see what are you saying? I'm waiting for public address system. I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for that. When God called Papo Yedeko, he hit the road. I said, as at 1984, 86, 85, they didn't have PA system in the church yet. He was preaching with his, his bare voice. He said, no microphone, only mouthophone. Say, why are you doing like that? Say, God sent me to the people. If the people cannot hear my voice anymore, they themselves will organize the microphone. Raw. When we came to Abuja Newly, we are the all the junctions. My, my myself and my wife, we are just there. Beggar Junction distributing track to people one by one, one by one. Driver the car, area ten UTC. We are just everywhere. Raw. This is medical. Doctor. That is medical doctor. Both of them out on the street. Raw evangelism. And people, people will see us. In fact, some people would, oh, the new church, I'm coming. I will be there. Some people, there, they will promise heaven and hell, heaven and earth. You won't see them in church on Sunday. But God will bring other people. But we kept at it. We kept at it. We kept at it. We didn't sit down as executive people sending other people out. Now we are going on evangelism raw. The other day I was in two places at the same time. I was in Yanya Market, I was in um, Kubo area, just, just restlessly. Next week, the minister's conference will interrupt the schedule. And then the following week, the schedule continues. Somebody say, ah, with a big church building, like big church like this, you are still on the street? I say, it looks to me like I am more at home there. Whether rain or shine, and if you doubt me, one of these days, just tune in and watch, watch us. Just watch out. Or you follow us and just take a look at what, what happens there. Raw blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, all manner of things happening on the street. Am I communicating at all? I'm trying to find the name of a man, Liberty University. What's the name of the founder? Not from Conway, Liberty University, not Temple University. Yes, Jerry Falwell. Jerry Falwell pastored a church of five people for five years. That is the father of the university. And it, God called him to be a minister. But the thing was getting challenged. So he said he decided to begin to knock on Nothing less than 100 doors in America. Knock on doors. Every day for the next how many years? Knock, knock, knock. My name is Pastor F Farwell. I came to tell you about Jesus. I don't want to hear. I'm sorry. Next door. Who are you? What are you talking about? Leave me, my friend. Move on. Are you sure I won't call police for you? I'm sorry. Until he broke. Boom. Short time, church became 20,000 from 5,000, five people in five years. Till the church built and owned the university. That university, Don Moyen and others have done recordings from their studio. Till he became an advisor of U.S. presidents in his lifetime. Michael, anything that you believe is what doing is what giving it everything you have got. And I'm going to talk about that at the end of the day. 
Vision. Vision. If vision must see the light of day. Run with it. Number six. Ensure. To uphold patience with the vision. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end it shall speak and not lie. Even if it tarries, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not tarry. Uphold or maintain patience with the vision. Why? One or A. Visions speak at the end. They speak at the end. At the beginning it may look like you are playing. At the beginning people may mock you. But it's this, but it's they speak at the end. Second, vision manifest for those who wait, who await their manifestation. They manifest for those who await their manifestation. You say, wait for it. Whatever you, you believe that God wants you to achieve with your life, as you are on the journey, however long it takes, wait for it. Totally understand that impatience is a major killer of vision. Impatience is a vision killer. Why? Impatience will make you organize alternatives. Abraham organized an alternative called Ishmael. That alternative and that arrangement and the whole thing is a problem for the earth till tomorrow. After you have done all you need to do with the vision, remain firm in pursuit. Everything you believe God is going to do for you or do with your life, after you have done all that you know to do, remain firm in pursuit. That was number, number six. Number seven, ensure that you remain in faith and in prayers for the vision. Remain in faith and in prayers for the vision. He was talking about vision and then he ended with the, the just shall live by his faith. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Is we are talking of vision now we are talking about faith. The meaning of that is there is a faith element in the fulfillment of all visions. There is a faith element. There is a faith factor. Why? Now, vision must be upheld by faith for it to see the light of day. And upheld by prayer for two reasons. Number one, it is only what is believable that is achievable. If you believe God can do it, believe it is realizable, then it is achievable. Only what is believable that is achievable. Only what is believable that is achievable. And secondly, vision must be robed in prayer to avert the onslaught of the powers of darkness. Vision must be robed in prayer to avert the onslaught of the kingdom of darkness. Because if God says you should do it, the devil will try to go against it. The devil will try to go against what God wants you to become. So faith and prayer must be in place. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. And against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Someone say a loud amen. So, ensure that the vision is valid, authentic, 
and worthwhile. Ensure that you maintain clarity with the vision. Ensure that you plan the vision. Ensure that you subject the vision to continuous reviews. Ensure that you run with the vision. Ensure that you maintain patience with the vision. Ensure that you remain in faith and in prayers. And finally, ensure that you draw inspiration from those achieving vision or fulfilling vision. Ensure that you draw inspiration from those fulfilling vision. Role models and mentors, they play very significant roles in the fulfillment of vision. Moses helped to shape the life of Joshua. Elijah helped to shape the destiny of Elisha. Somebody somewhere must be helping to shape your destiny and your life and your vision. I had the vision of a stress-free, struggle-free, quarrel-free, crisis free two men free who, 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 who beat each other who offended each other that kind of free marriage marriage devoid of pressure or tension because the pressure and tension of ministry does not require an added tension I had that vision and I saw role models in the marital line, Kenneth Copeland and Gloria Copeland, Kenneth Francis Hunter and Charles Hunter. I saw T.L. Osborne and Daisy Osborne, man and wife, um, who stood side by side with each other in ministry, operated more like brothers and sisters or more like friends. More like partners. And I said, that's... And the more I looked at... At that time, I hadn't known about Papa Yede At that time, at that early time. And then later on, I, I, I got to see him. As I drew light from this, it became easy for me to see how possible it would be. Papa Yede stood on a robot's university ground. And he looked at the university and said, this is possible anywhere. That gave birth to Covenant University. It's part of what gave birth to it. Whatever you are doing or you plan to do, somebody is already doing it. Who is that person? Identify that person and connect. What to you is a possibility is for somebody already a reality. All right? What is your own destination is somebody's current position. <laughs> I am going there and somebody is already there. You don't need to struggle to find the road there. Connect and liaise with the person who is there and he will show you how he got there and possibly show you what to avoid so that you don't make mistakes he made to get there. So that you don't fall into the pit he fell into to get there. You connect with him and you shorten your journey. Somebody say amen. amen. We have a very arrogant generation. No regard for fathers, no regard for mentors, no regard for anybody ahead of them. Oh, we are all priests, we are all anointed, we are all this and that. And they just messing up everywhere, everything, everywhere. Say amen. Say it louder, amen. Is God speaking to somebody here? I can't go up in my father in the Lord now that me and my wife quarrel. With which mouth will I say it? God forbid. Where did I, did I see it? Where? How did you see it? Where were you looking? So somebody can easily sack his wife because there is nobody to call him to say what happened. And it can happen anyhow. 
somebody say amen. There are pastors in this, there are people in this place now that cannot, that cannot arrive with some stories. They're not hearable. Somebody say amen. Listen. Your association affects your destination. Write it down. Take your seat. It affects your destination. It affects your destination. Your association is helping to orchestrate your destination. Who you follow determines where you can reach. Because where the man reach, you reach. It takes iron to sharpen iron. Am I communicating? When you look at people that are going somewhere, you see people who have actually gotten somewhere. It gives you hope. We are here because I saw a place called Faith Tabernacle. I mean, I saw how effortless the place was built. I saw how easy it was built. I was there when there was no building. I drove with my mother in the Lord in the car. Drove around the forest. When the ground was dug, I saw it. When the building was dedicated, I was there. When the building was not yet dedicated and we had a night vigil there and the rain beat us from the open roof in the center, I was there. <laughs> so, it, it, what, you, what, you, what you see determines what you can dare. It was, it was not hard to dare anything. To dare the thing like this because we saw it easily. So don't forget to draw inspiration from people that are ahead of you. Don't forget to draw inspiration. Proverbs 27 and in verse 7. Thin, iron sharpeneth iron. That is how a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Proverbs thirteen twenty: He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. In any realm you find yourself, there are role models there. Any realm. And if there are no role models in your realm, God is trying to raise you. If in your line of business or endeavor, you cannot find a standard Christian, a standard Christian that is millionaire, billionaire, or a heavy mantle carrier that is right in the front there, it means you, you are the one you are waiting for. Then you must arise and give it all it takes. But the prophetic and pastoral, apostolic and priestly ministry is a ministry that mentors you in any realm of your life because all truths are parallel. Whatever it takes for a ministry to be successful, it will take a business also to be successful. It will take a professor to be successful. Am I communicating? It will take the same thing for a sportsman to be successful. I'm reviewing Seed of Destiny. I'm working in the studio. I am pre preparing someone for, for this service. I'm preparing for minister's conference next week. I am doing all the things at the same time. <laughs> I'm preaching in Ghana tomorrow. The Full Gospel Business Men's Fellowship National Convention of their country. That, uh, and then return back, refund, refund back on Friday to continue the schedule. Am I communicating? Who will be a professor who will pursue his professorial assignment with that level of fire? And they say you need 15 scientific papers to be made a professor. You will give them 1,500 papers. Or you need you need twenty people, you need twenty publications to, to be paid a professor, you give them two thousand. Say choose twenty out of it. Or choose hundred out of it. Doctor, did you hear what I just said? All right. Amen. I mean, 
It doesn't matter what is your realm. Apply yourself according to principles of scripture. And you find yourself there. It's a new day for you. The things I have said so far, let me give you the summary of it in three statements. Number one, identify your God-ordained vision and purpose for life. Identify it. It may be to serve. He asked God's servant, Bishop Abiyo, what is your vision? He said his vision is that God sent him to Bishop Oedipus' life to help him fulfill God's purpose for his life. Hallelujah. Identify your God-ordained vision and purpose. It might be to depopulate hell and populate heaven like Rihard Bunker and whatever be the platform where God wants me to do that, that is my life. Identify your God-ordained vision and purpose. Number two, give it all it takes. Give it all you have got. If you have identified what God wants you to do with your life, push out. Your put, give it your time, your energy, your, your resources, your wisdom. Give it your everything you have got. All that is within you. All that is giveable. Give it. Hold nothing back. Give it all you have got. Give it all you have got. Give it all you have got. Give it all it takes. Give it all you have got. Finally, keep at it. With faith, prayer, and patience until desired results are achieved. Keep at it with faith, with prayer, with patience until desired results are achieved. Keep at it with faith. Keep at it with prayer. Keep at it with patience until desired results are achieved. Somebody say amen. I was in the car with a pastor one day, we we're going somewhere, I think from Abuja to just or somewhere. Somebody we knew grew up together. And he was asking me. That time, I think our ministry was just three or two years, three years. But God has helped us. I mean, there was evidence that things were working. And he said, What is the secret of what you are doing and what's happening? I told him, I said, our people say, whatever took you to the house of the blacksmith must be clearly defined. You don't go to blacksmith's house to sharpen knife. Major matters take you there. In blacksmith's house, they manufacture axe, cutlass, then gone. You say, okay. <laughs> you went to the house of the blacksmith and you knew what took you there. He thought about that thing for almost 10 years. Be def let your life have a definition and then you will have a destination. Stand up on your feet. It is evening mass, so it's better we stop here. Let your life have a, def a definition, then it will have a destination. Somebody say amen. Anyone here who has missed it before, the last time shall be the last the last time shall be the last. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone say a louder amen. amen. Did you receive something tonight? This generation shall hear about you. Amen. Who is God speaking to? To think your life cannot amount to anything. Very soon they will be shocked. One good thing about life, don't forget this. Your destination is not at the mercy of people's imagination. Your destination is at the mercy of your revelation. What people think, feel, and wish is not what determines where you reach. What have you seen? What do you feel? And what has God said? That is what determines where you reach. You shall reach well. You shall reach there. You shall reach there. Can you lift up your two hands and lift your voice and give the Lord the praise today for what you have received? Give him the praise, give him the honor, give him the adoration. In the name of Jesus. If it was left for what people imagine, all of us will not be here. Bad look does not kill chicken. <laughs> Somebody, chicken, chicken, whatever the chicken did. Maybe mistakenly we wait on the ground or something and then they look it with eye. Bad look. And he fell down and died. No. He shook himself. He's walking. Not noticing the look. The meaning of this is don't be over concerned about what people feel or wish. Don't be over concerned about what people think or say or do. Hey! As far as you know, your conscience is clear. You are establishing uprightness. You exercise your conscience to be void of offense towards God and towards man. And you know you are doing the best that you know to do in the will of God. Don't finish yourself. Because these people said this or they thought that or they wished this. It won't come to pass. And people will be angry with you if you are going in the wrong, right direction. People will even be angry with you even if you are not in yet. But they perceive you can be something. Because some of us are wondering, why are they hating me? I don't even have money. It is what they are perceiving that your life may become. It's what their little demons and minions are telling them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lift up your hands everywhere you are and say, Father, I come before you today. Tonight, I receive that grace to know your will for my life. Help me, Lord, to understand your vision and your purpose for my life. Help me, Lord, with the grace to give it everything I have. Help me, Lord, to keep at it with faith, with prayer, with patience until the desired result. I receive the grace to reach where you want me to reach, Lord. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. I receive that grace.
speak to God. Father, help me to identify your purpose for me, your vision for my life. Help me with the grace to give it all I have got, to give it all it takes, and help me with the faith and with patience and with prayer until desired results are achieved. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. Whatever is delaying in your life, whether it is your vision and purpose in life as a whole, or your financial vision, or your marital vision, or your career vision, or your fruitfulness vision, I stand here to announce that delay is over. That delay is over. delay is over that delay is over this communion tonight will be a communion of revelation it will be a communion of acceleration Ay, 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 it will be a communion of revelation it will be a communion of acceleration and are you ready for this? It will be a communion of energization. Fresh energy, fresh energy, fresh strength in the name of Jesus. Under 24 hours, you have a testimony to tell. Under seven days, you have a story to tell. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. I want to pray at this moment for everyone who says, I don't want to delay my total surrender to Jesus anymore. I want my sins forgiven. I want addiction broken up my life. I want to live for Jesus. I want today to mark a new day for me. Pick up your Bibles and your bags as you come forward. At the same time, we take communion positions. Quickly, I'll give you the count of seven. One. I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Let come what may. The Holy Spirit. I will obey. I live for Jesus day after day. Everybody sing. I live for Jesus. Day after day, I live for Jesus. Let God work me. How is me? Keep coming. Everybody sing. I live for Jesus. Day after day, I live for Jesus. When you when you pick up the communion, still hold on to it until we pray upon them. God bless you. Those coming, you have an addiction in your life, smoking, drinking, immoral addiction, or any form of addiction you want broken. You can also step forward here and let us pray for you and let that yoke be broken. I live for Jesus. Day after day, I live, I live for Jesus. Jesus. Come on, man.
of you in the frontier, place your right hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, I come before you today to ask for forgiveness for my sins. Today, I have decided to follow you, Lord, no turning back from today, forward ever, backward never. I receive the grace to live for you, Lord, and to do your will. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you. I declare the hold of the enemy broken off your life. And grace to live for God is released upon you.